Okay, so the second guest tonight is a woman named Crystal Knight. She's a former political director for Priorities USA, the largest Democratic presidential super PAC. She uh, has a master's degree from the University College of London, very, very fine school, and a degree in journalism from Howard University. I also talked to her, to her yesterday. So, Ms. Knight, I'm going to start with you the way I started with Mark Lamont Hill, uh, citing a Gallup poll of 20 years ago in 2001 that showed the majority of Americans felt that ra race relations between blacks and whites were good. But 20 years later, the majority feel they're bad. Why the shift? What happened? Well, I think there are a number of things that have happened over the last 20 years. One, um, there was the first African-American president who took, you know, that was elected in this country, Barack Obama. And what we saw, particularly with his election, race relations really took a turn for the worse. Um, there was a lot of, you know, undergirded, you know, um, microaggressions in the Senate. There were a lot of microaggressions in Congress, and we saw a lot of people reacting negatively to having the first African American president in this country. Then why was he reelected, though? The, why, why was he reelected by more of a plurality the second mm -hmm. time than the first time? If, if what you're saying is that, all right, Barack Obama got to be president, and then some people didn't like mm -hmm. that, but when he ran again, he was reelected. Well, the good thing about, you know, elections in this country is that the majority wins, right? And so there was an overwhelming majority of Americans who still thought and believed in his presidency based upon some of the policies that he was able to accomplish, um, particularly ACA in his first term. And so it's not surprising that he got reelected because he was a good president. Um, but what is surprising is how rela race relations took a turn and how the, the relationship between African-Americans specifically and police, um, they began to deteriorate under his presidency. And even in the years, you know, the future the future years that preceded his his term. And so we have to look at all of those things. I think even most recent with the George Floyd um, incident that happened last summer um, and all of the protests that have been happening, um, those things have not helped race relations in this country by any no, stretch of the imagination. Sure. But I think at this point um, that because of George Floyd in particular and others that have been captured on video, and, and then sent out over the internet. That's the big component that's different now than 2001, is that a lot of the police brutality has been captured and sent out. And people react emotionally to that. African-Americans react emotionally to it. And I think that has caused race relations to deteriorate in some degree. Right, but even though police are being caught on camera, the, the bad actors are still, you know, taking place. And so on one hand, you're saying, yes, body cameras have helped improve, you know, um, it, reprimanding police officers. But at the same time, you still have police officers who are literally out here punching citizens. Right here in the District of Columbia, last week, a man was arrested and he was literally punched in the face by a police officer while two other police officers held him. And so, again, if you know that you're being filmed, if you know that you're wearing a body camera and you know that citizens now have smartphones, why do you continue to? Act well, they're going to lose their jobs. You know, people. you know, they'll pay a price. For maybe. That. No, that's not a maybe. They will. Um, but. The point is, there are 88,000 law enforcement officers in the United States of America. Among those 88,000 are a substantial minority of black officers and Hispanic officers. I don't believe there's a mass mindset to abuse African Americans. I don't believe that. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the data backs me up. However, I'll, everyone knows there are bad police officers. There are brutal police officers. There are bigots who don't like blacks. Everybody knows that. But now in our society, if they are uncovered, they're gone. They're not protected any longer. Would you see that point? I would not see that point. Really? Because when I think about, well, when I think about Eric Gardner in New York and how he was choked to death, um, that police officer did not lose his job. Um, when I think about Tamir Rice, um, in Ohio, who was shot because he had a toy gun. That police officer was removed from the force, but he was able to move to another state and get another job on a police force. And so, you know, there are instances after instances, just like those two, 
where police act in, improperly, they act incorrect, and they're either um, temporarily reprimanded, um, they're, they're able to retire um, and, you know, and still have their pension, they're able to go on and live another life. Whereas a person of color, a black person, they're not afforded that same opportunity and that and ability. And do you think this so, is endemic in our society? I mean, you think this is everywhere? I think that there is a problem with policing in this country. I believe that there needs to be a federal overhaul of the way that police conduct themselves um, with people of color in this country. And there needs to be a national registry that would, you know, let other district, other police districts know when a police officer has had a, a major or a serious incident so that he or she is not able to simply retire okay. or leave or resign. Look, I'm, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to get into that, but I am going to get into if you are attacking the police, not you yourself, but any, any group right. or, or person, then the likelihood of African-Americans being harmed rises. And I know, you know, the stat, I mean, it's an incredible stat that 89% of all African-American homicide victims, people murdered, are murdered by other African-Americans. And if you don't have a strong police force, that number is going to rise. So I, I talked to Hill about this. I said, OK, you don't like the police. You fear the police. But shouldn't you fear the African-American killers more? You see what's happening in Chicago and D.C. and Philly and New York where black drug gangs are running wild. They're murdering people all over the place. And the, and the police themselves are receding from it. They're not reacting as strongly as they once did. So by demonizing the police, aren't you putting African-Americans in more danger? Well, listen, Bill, I think that you make a, a great point. Black on black crime is a problem in this country. It's a problem in a lot of the urban centers of this of this of this country and major cities. What I'm saying, I'm not, you know, demonizing police. I believe that police are needed in our society. What I'm saying is that we have to also fund other programs. We have to fund community violence intervention programs. We have to fund mental health issue um, programs. We have to fund job training programs. We have to fund things that are deterrents to crime. Would, what we're seeing you, in a lot of the- Okay. Would you be willing to go out and in addition to that, and I don't object to any of that, fund mm -hmm. a massive family values campaign so that the 70% of African-American babies born out of wedlock might drop down to 50%. Because as you know, young boys without a father, they are the first recruits of gang members. Would you be willing well, to do that? I would be willing to fund anything that would be supportive of communities of color and would allow communities of color to have the same access to equity that suburban communities have across this country. And so I reject the statistic that, you know, because a child is born out of wedlock, that he or she does not have the same opportunity of success in this country. That just shouldn't be. And so that's a systemic problem that our country needs to work on and fix through But it's much higher policy. in the African-American precincts. And I think that if family were emphasized there, you would see more benefits go to younger African-Americans. Last question. You're a very successful woman, very articulate woman. Um, do you think that America is noble? Has America been fair to you? I think that America is always striving to be a better country than the way that it was founded. I have to always go back to 1776 when this country was founded. It was founded with white wealthy men in mind. So it was not founded with people of color in mind. And it certainly wasn't founded with women in mind. Have I enjoyed some of the success and the pearls of being an American citizen? Absolutely. But do I know that my country, I can push my country and advocate for my country to be a better America? Absolutely. No, we all want and improvements. So I think, but, you know, um, yes. and I, I'm going to send you my book, Killing England. There's a reason why it was all white, rich guys making the Constitution. And it, why it, is that? Well, it's a long story, but it's basically they were the only ones that had the resources 
to go to Philadelphia. But they literally pillaged other countries for resources. I, I mean, how well, can you at, sit at here that, and say at that, that time they were just hanging on and hoping they weren't going to be hung by the king? Well, you know, we're going to we're going to agree to disagree on that point. Well, but read my I, book I, first because it's a fact based book, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it because it's not a political book; it's just a history book. But there is a reason why that happened. But as you say, and I agree with you 100 percent. We're trying here to bring everybody together and everybody gets an equal shot at the pursuit of happiness. That's what it's all about. So I really appreciate it, Miss Knight. Thank you for coming on. And if we can ever do you a favor of any kind, let us know, okay? Thank you for having me. Enjoyed the conversation. Okay, so let me set the record straight on this because this is important. Miss Knight and all of the critical race theory zealots believe that America was founded on racism, that we're a horrible country, that we need reparations, and this divides blacks and whites. Here is the truth, okay? I wrote a book, Killing England, like I mentioned. Please read the book. Please give it to any African-American that you're friendly with. When the American Revolution began, the founding fathers knew they could never defeat the king of England and his huge army and navy without all of the colonies coming together. They couldn't just do it with New England or New York or Philadelphia. They needed everybody from Georgia way on up to the Massachusetts Bay Colony, which extended into Maine. They had to get everybody involved in order to win the Revolutionary War. The South's economy was 100% agrarian, okay? Tobacco, cotton, crops, and there wasn't enough labor in the South. Not, they didn't have the people there. So they imported slaves, not justifying it. It was horrible. It was horrible. And any decent person would have recoiled from it. But the slave owners and the slave sellers and everybody else didn't. That's their sin. And if you're a believer, they were judged. There is no excuse. But the economy would not have existed if not for slavery. Because there were not enough people and not enough money to pay them. So the South would never have signed on to the Revolutionary War without a continuation of slavery. Ever. Ever. All right? Everybody knew that. Now, the Adams boys, John Adams, John Quincy Adams' son, John Hancock, Samuel Adams up in Boston, they hated slavery. They hated it. And most of the founding fathers did. Benjamin Franklin didn't like slavery. The Southern guys, Madison, Jefferson, Washington, they had slaves. So that's, again, their sin. But they all came together in Philadelphia and they forged a pack to fight the king, knowing that if they lost, they were all going to get hung. But they didn't deal with the slavery issue then in order to unite all 13 colonies against the king. But they did build into the Declaration of Independence the words, all men are created equal, not all white men. And that set a foundation to repudiate slavery in the years to come, which is exactly what happened. And most of the people that forced the slavery out of the United States were white men who fought on the side of the North in the Civil War. That's the truth. That's it. I'm not justifying anything. I'm telling you the truth and why it happened. It wasn't a bunch of guys in Philadelphia getting together going, ah, we got to have slavery. That's not what it was. They were bitterly divided. And there were more people opposed to slavery among the founding fathers than supported. But, you know, I mean, I can give this lecture all day long to Crystal Knight, and Crystal Knight's not going to believe it. She doesn't want to believe it. Not just to make her a bad person. She just doesn't want to believe it. Just like Hill doesn't want to believe the truth about criminality. Hey, I'm sure you've noticed that everything is getting more expensive. And with all this printing money, 
and spending by the progressives, I'm concerned the dollar's end could be near. If the government continues this way, the dollar could freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. That's why there's never been a more important time to consider gold and silver to protect you and your family. And American Hartford Gold is the only company I'm happy to put my name behind. I have done business with them myself. It just takes a quick phone call and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.